Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody uh, is doing well. Hope everybody had a really good uh, trading week. There was some really, uh, really good value. Really, really good value. We'll talk about that uh, in a second. But it, it really is amazing. And this is kind of, again, the, the whole purpose uh, of our, at least YouTube platform, is to kind of, you know, show everything as it's happening. Okay, it's nothing... A hindsight, there's nothing, you know, talk about, you know, what if and we're in 2020. It's about what we think is happening. And, and our job as traders is put ourselves in a position to have an opinion and wait for that opinion uh, to get validated. So if you guys remember last weekend update, okay, um, that Friday I did something, the last Friday of last week, um, I did something I haven't done in years was completely being idle, okay? I didn't put on a single trade. Uh, last Friday, the previous Friday, uh, there was no value. And if you guys remember, that whole week was all contracting channels. And I believe, and again, if you watch, kind of watch the, the video throughout the week, you kind of know I was talking about kind of this rounding top that I felt that, you know, it wasn't something imminent. It wasn't going to be Armageddon type of like back test. Uh, but I did believe that the market was heavy. Okay. I believe that a lot of names. Uh, just did not participate uh, in this rally. Your Amazons of the world, um, your, you know, your Amazons of the world, um, Facebook for the most part. We'll talk about that. Facebook, you know, a lot of names are just very, very, um, very lagging to what we saw in the market. Actually, of course, you have the you have the Tesla's of the world. They did very, very well. The Beyonds, but a lot of names they were very soured. And going into this week, I knew distribution only was going to take three, four days and kind of Friday, last Friday was, you know, the kind of the, the last point of the bottom of inactivity. So I wanted to make sure going into this week that number one, well, the market kind of played out to what I believed was going to happen. Again, it's not about being right. Again, if you look at the indexes towards the end of the week, Everything is down 1%. Again, it wasn't a call, okay? It, 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 it's nothing about being right or wrong. I wanted to make sure going into every, every single trading week that I'm trading eyes wide open, that I'm going into every single trading week, kind of really understanding that, hey, if I'm wrong here, it's not going to be a paper cut. So I want to make sure we put everybody in a position that we are seeing the market the right way, not the way we want to see it, okay? Not our reality. The reality is in front of us. And I, I, I was talking about this rounding top um, and then all of a sudden you, you, you came in and you started seeing all this news of this coronavirus. Now, when I first heard the name, the coronavirus, I was like, Corona, like, when, like is this something wrong with the beer? Weird name. But it started getting pretty serious. Okay. And you started seeing case after case after case. And when, when the market gets really, really nervous, whether it's uh, macro wise, politically, uh, health wise, there's going to be. Um, there's going to be a buyer strike at some point. Now, the question is, how does this virus, and again, this virus now has uh, 56 total uh, cases of death, I think three uh, in the United States, and I think 2,000 in China, 2,000 uh, cases in, in China. So there is a fear. There, you know, there is a global fear that, oh my God, what happens if it just spread, uh, spreads macro and you know, you're getting it from Wichita, Kansas to uh, Paris, France. And that, that is the fear. And initially that brought down the market. Now, when you go back into the last you know, three or four major health scares around the world, if you guys remember when I was living still in Brooklyn, there was that Zika. You guys remember the, the Zika, those, the, the Zika scare? It was those mosquitoes. I remember, you know, walking down uh, in Brooklyn, I remember there was spraying. There was spraying in the air for, the airplanes were flying, there was spraying in the air for, for the Zika virus. You know, pe people were scared. Uh, and then you had SARS, and then you had Ebola recently. You guys remember the Ebola scare, right? The Ebola scare. And the one thing, the common denominator of all these fears, okay, all these macro fears that the CDC, and, and they're right to do so, kind of put on the table is number one, it kind of gets controlled. 
And number two, when you're talking about the market, if you look at all those scares, think about where we are, right? With Zika, Ebola, SARS, right? All these, these, these recent health scares. And if you look up, the market is at pretty much all time highs. So short term, yeah, of course, you're going to get a lot of fear. Um, people are going to be a little bit on the sidelines because they want to see how, um, how much control they could actually get of this virus and the ultimate, you know, the ultimate end game. And we don't know that yet. But if you look at from the point of speaking from historical references where the star stock market was when this healthcare uh, health scare um, came out, okay, to where we are now, the market kind of engulfs everything. Now, again, we don't know the full effects. We don't know the ramifications. We're, you know, we're sitting here with our fingers crossed and saying, well, hopefully this will play out exactly the same way from every single market scare. But again, we don't know that, okay? We don't know that. So short term, you could feel a softness in the market, but long term, again, unless this is something like the next coming, you know, of like the, unfortunately, like the HIV virus or something like that, I think the market eventually, whether it's this week, the next week, whatever the case may be, I think eventually if they can isolate it and exactly, and again, there's so many people that are unfortunately quarantined throughout the whole uh, area of China, that eventually the market will do the same thing that the market does for everything, okay? Eventually the market will become numb to this news. It'll just be a headline. And just like Ebola, like the last really significant health scare, the market kind of pushes it out of bounds. Not that it's not important. And again, you know, so many people died uh, of the Ebola virus, but again, it was at the end of the day, it was contained, okay? It was contained. And now, if you go back to actually remembering, try to remember offhand without doing any research, nobody really has an opinion of what happened on, in Ebola unless you really, really followed it. So I, I, I can imagine, again, this is just all speculation, obviously. I can imagine that the coronavirus will eventually be contained. You'll see um, the CDC, whether it's this week, next week, the following week, at least the following weeks, give you more concrete information about it how they're trying to prevent it, uh, or at least trying to prevent it from spreading. And I, I think, again, based on historical value, where the recent health scares were, I think the market will engulf it and the market goes higher. And if you look at from the, from the point of reference from the trading aspect this week, the market was really, really good, okay? Last week, a lot of contraction. And again, not every single week, you need to learn a lesson. Uh, sometimes when you have experience in the market, again, I'm going on my 21st year, you, you don't need to be validated. You don't need to be, you know, you know, tapped on the shoulder and say, hey, great job, you identified, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's not about that. It, it, it's again, putting you in a situation that you're trading eyes wide open, not eyes wide shut. And I think this week's action, despite, you know, a little bit of a pullback in the market. And again, when you talk about a pullback, you're talking about 1% across the board, right? And again, you had a pretty big move on Friday, but did anybody really notice, right? And, and that's a very, very fair question. When you have still a lot of speculation money, especially in stocks like Tesla, which, which again, it's breaking up more marriages than uh, Heidi Fleiss did. If you guys remember who Heidi Fleiss was, right? The Hollywood madam. Um, so, Tesla's going absolutely nuts. BYND has caught a second life uh, and it's acting very, very well. You have stocks like Netflix. And we talked about Netflix in the beginning of, in the, towards the end of the week la last week about kind of, it wasn't great, you know, it wasn't great earnings, but it wasn't bad earnings. But it really does show you that unless a company comes out with really horrific numbers, it really does show you how strong the market is because unless the market, you know, they tell the market, well, growth has completely slowed down. We're going chapter 11. The market is giving, especially every high riser, every beta name, every darling, right? They're giving them the benefit of the doubt. And you, you can see how much speculation money there still is. And again, this is with a global potential macro health scare. So overall, when you look at the tape this week, very, very strong, right? Despite, you know, despite the health scare, uh, the NASDAQ 100, the Qs, they orderly and this was orderly again thursday i had no idea the market was down until i looked up and i was like, wow the dow's down 174 five points i didn't know yesterday until about lunchtime okay i didn't i didn't say wow the market's actually you know selling off pretty you don't realize this because how much individual speculation the money is going through whether it's all these 
uh, coronavirus names or some beta names. Uh, it's just very, very strong tape. And again, when you look at the macro view, again, yeah, did we have this blow off top that we talked about Wednesday? We did. Okay, we did. We get the back test, whether the back test was technical or health related. Again, I don't care about being right. It's not about being right. It's just, again, understanding what is in front of us. Again, it's like walking into, it's like walking into a dark alley. Would you randomly walk into a dark alley? No, you have to figure out you have to figure out the safest way of travel. So that's all we're trying to do. So going into this week, again, yeah, I mean, we have a line in the sand for this week. Okay, if you look at the NASDAQ 100, we're looking at this 221.60s uh, area, which is the rising 10-day moving average. And again, if you believe in the theory, you know, any guys who have been in the live webinar for, for years, you kind of know that if the 10-day moving average for me is the birth of the trade to the upside, well, any close below the 10-day moving average uh, it will be the birth of the trade to the downside. So this is a pretty clean uh, line in the sand uh, going into uh, this week. Again, obviously, uh, you know, the, the, the China names got hit really hard, right? You had Baidu uh, hit really, really hard. You had LK, who's been a monster flyer, big, big monster flyer, uh, got hit very, very hard. Alibaba, right? Destroyed. And somebody somebody was laughing about it, and they said, well, um, you know, maybe the Chinese people are going to stay inside uh, and watch Netflix, and then people realize there is no Netflix in China, but there is the Netflix of China, which is IQ. And obviously, again, they didn't care that this was the Netflix of China, that people are going to stay home and watch movies. It got hit as well. So you had a macro effect on a lot of names, uh, but again, you also had a lot of really, really good movers this week, a lot of strength. Uh, Tesla, again, is a beast. Um, I forgot, it was, I think, I forgot the name of the firm, Pierre or something. Um, they came out with an $800 price target this week, and normally people would say, who the hell cares? But they were the first, they were the highest price target a year ago on Tesla. So the, the fact that they had a $500 price on the $520, whatever it was last year, and it came to fruition, all of a sudden they became credible, okay? It's not, it wasn't just a random boutique firm that came out with a study. They were credible, and they took the stock to 600. Now again, the question going into this week is, how much legs or, or how much legs does this coronavirus have macro wise and the question going into this week because again er, uh, Tess, um, netflix kicked off earnings season which again you might not have the greatest earnings in the world but again the scoreboard is a scoreboard you can, you can see the stock is starting to break out again with obviously a line in the sand back to the upside this week as well so the questions going into this week number one you have all these beta names reporting uh, you got Amazon, right? You have Amazon, who, who's, who's been a miserable trading stock. Anybody who's been trading Amazon for the last, even say six months, okay? You had your two-day run, right? You had your two-day run, which was a magnificent run. And then the stock did absolutely nothing for the next month. And the one thing that you've seen as the market's rallying, okay, the Amazon reports uh, end of this week, you're seeing literally on a daily basis, as soon as the stock dips, really aggressive call buying coming in. And I'm not talking about fifteen thousand dollars. Guys are coming in for the last two, three weeks, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars of out of the money calls. The 1950s, the 2000s, the 2100s. So there is a lot of big, big money being placed on Amazon into earnings. Now the question is, do they know something? Are they uh, very, very confident in that position? Or again, are they just sipping Kool-Aid and hoping to God that Amazon actually wakes up? Again, one of the questions that will be answered this week. You have Tesla, right? They're coming out with earnings. Um, again, everybody's waiting for Tesla. One of the biggest runs I can, I can remember seeing in a very, very long time. And again, I, I've said this over the years in nausea. Okay, Tesla was a great trader this week, both long and short, um, especially Thursday. Thursday, there was two longs and two shorts within four different channels, which is an amazing, amazing uh, thing to watch. But the, the one thing that I will say this to the perma bulls and the perma bears, I trade channels, okay? I, I don't care uh, which way the, the stock goes. It, it's, I, I wanna, if anybody's watching this for the first time, I want you to really understand it. For me, it doesn't make a difference. I cheer for Tesla, right? I cheer for Elon Musk. I personally think this is the greatest stock ever okay ever i'm doing this for almost 21 years so i have a bias that i love the stock but i don't have a bias of which way i, I want to see the stock go and it, it's just amazing it, it's still so mind-boggling to see such hatred from both bulls and bears in the stock 
If you just used all that energy and actually realized that you could, you know, you're missing out literally on one of the greatest two-sided traders in our generation, you would spend a lot better energy and your money would be better off than sit there and bitching and moaning about Elon's a fraud or the stock's going to 1,000, the stock's going to 200, the stock's going to 10,000, the stock's going to zero. Just trade the price action. Nobody cares what you think. Does anybody really think what you, what you think? This is the stock market. It's either gonna go higher or it's gonna go lower. Your job is to make sure that you're taking full advantage of the potential move. So the idea that you're sitting and wasting all this energy, brain cells and everything in between, bitching and moaning about some guy on the internet talking about, well, the stock's going higher, man, you're an idiot. Well, the stock's going lower, man, you're an idiot. Well, no, you're the idiot because you're burning all your, your, your mental equity trying to convince yourself that you are right. Big question. A lot of buyers came in ahead of Tesla's earnings. That will be obviously the big catalyst this week. The notable bet uh, that I saw this week, uh, I believe somebody bought $2.7 million worth of premium of the February 21st, 625 calls. I, I, that was the one that stood out of my mind. $2.7 million. Again, is he not uncertain? We'll see. You know, we'll see what happens uh, with Tesla. Um, Roku, right? Roku's been a phenomenal trader, even though it doesn't look like anything, right? It really, if, again, if you don't trade Roku, Roku's a great trading stock. It, it's 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 starting to get up there, and I've been trading Roku now for about a couple of years now, ever since it made its first move. Roku is really turning into something really good. I just want this thing to get out of its range. It's been sitting in this bottom range here for a long time and the top range for a long time. But again, if you trade channels, you can see so much really good value in Roku. So the question going into this week, right, and I have to check earnings, well, is this finally going to break out of a channel? Here's the bottom channel here, a very, very specific channel. Here's the top channel, a very, very specific channel. The question is which way it's going to go. I, again, at this point, I don't care which way it goes. Just pick a decision, pick a side, and start going because it, be, uh, it could be very, very good. Um, let me see what else I want to talk about here. And I, I think beyond, okay, be, beyond in the last couple of weeks has been great. Again, we started talking about the option order flow all the way down here, right? And the thing is with Beyond, even if you've never traded Beyond, let me just kind of share the light on something. They have the most amazing PR department, okay? They know at the perfect time when to release a PR. And we started noticing about a month ago, a month and a half ago, down here on the 72, 73 areas, we started seeing call buying coming in. The 79s, the 85s, the 96s, the 110s, and you're like, what, what the hell is going on? The stock's at $73, yada, 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 the stock goes to 110 bucks. I believe they come out with earnings tomorrow. I have to double check. I believe they come out with earnings after the, uh, after the close. I have to double check. I, again, I might be uh, confusing symbols. But you started seeing this week, right, as the stock was consolidating, you started seeing this week one a monster buy came in at, at the 170 calls. Again, keep in mind the stock's $119. Monster buy came in the 170 calls. You started seeing short-term expiration uh, call buyers in the 150s, 155s, and the 170s. So it's gonna be very, very interesting to see uh, what happens, right? What happens uh, after earnings as well? Uh, but again, you have to like the what you're seeing in the market. I mean, you really, really do. I, I, again, we don't know what the end game will be in this health scare. Hopefully, it'll be nothing and will resemble uh, what we saw with all the previous health scares, and the market will kind of resume. But again, I, I think these beta names have to show up this week. I mean, they really do. Uh, first of all, again, how you know how smart money's positioning. Look at Intel. Look at the run on Intel, right? Look at the run on Intel. There was massive call buying ahead of earnings. One guy even bought 40,000 calls, right? You think he knew something? Okay, so the option market is really dictating potential movements in the markets. And we're starting to see, again, kind of got kind of review, big buyers ahead of Amazon's earnings, big buyers ahead of Tesla's earnings, really big buyers ahead of Beyond's earnings. So again, the speculation money is there. Uh, the fuel to the market is still very, very strong. The only thing that's going to derail it is how significant and how aggressive this health scare uh, could be. Uh, if you look at the week, really good week, uh, really, really good week. If, we, if you've been watching our feed, uh, for, again, I, you know, everything that I'm putting in is in real time. There's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing edited or, or this is it. These are the pivots. They, they're either going to go or not going to go. So uh, Friday, I traded uh, beyond the Netflix uh, off the open. Netflix was great. Netflix was really, really good. Um, 
team I didn't get. So we'll talk about these pivots. So BYND, let's talk about the pivots. Uh, so we talked about this pre-market, this 124 and a half. Here's a whole 124 and a half, uh, 125 area. I, I said there's a shot it gets to 127. Uh, the reason why I said 127, because look at you know, look at the 50-day supply. It was 126.86, and da 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 da. da. Look at the stock stopped within 25 cents of supply. So that was a really uh, big big move. Uh, Netflix was the big one for me uh, on Friday. Uh, so. 350 needs to build. 352 is pre-market highs, so that's important as well. Uh, and I said, I, I said, there's a shot it gets to 360. Um, again, here is, you know, here is the 350, right? Here is the 350. These two candles right here, right? Look at the, look at the top of these candles, right? 350, 350, uh, 351.95. So 352 is the pre-market highs. And once it broke three, you know, once it got above that, that 52, the stock just exploded and stopped right under 360 so really really big move before uh it reversed i still like it if the market wakes up this week i, I definitely still like it i there will definitely be a sneakier pivot uh than the 360 uh macro uh in in this place somewhere but so that was good uh tesla obviously never got up there uh never got up to the two uh, 582 area uh team was a big mover uh team was a big mover indeed we talked about the 147 right so here's the 147 into supply pre-market uh, and once it got, it got above 147, started building. Again, stocks go from supply to supply to demand to demand. So it took out 147 and went right to the next supply zone, almost 151. Uh, so big move there uh, as well. And this one I missed. Uh, this one I missed. I was already at lunchtime. Um, I, joked around, uh, I joked around the previous day as I was charting. And I said, and I posted a picture of my son. He was uh, doing a Skype session with his uh, Spanish tutor. And I said, well, and I said, hey, daddy, uh, I think Facebook's about to roll over. And this was actually the only beta name. If you look at, uh, if you looked at the chart coming into Friday's session, this was the, actually the only beta name, right? This is the only beta name right into support here that I knew this 219 area was going to be important. And I said, there's a shot it gets down to 215. It didn't quite get down there, but uh, two, 219 held twice. If it builds below, can flush. Uh, I unfortunately missed this trade, but again, here is the move for all you guys who did take it. Uh, 219.12, uh, 219.27, it broke the 219 and went all the way down to 216. So it didn't quite get to 215 and change, but it got the 216. Congratulations for all you guys who caught that uh, as well. And I think that's it. Uh, Expedia never got up to 15. Uh, ISRG never went red to green, and obviously Roku never got up to uh, 36 as well. Uh, Netflix again, fire, blah, 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 blah. Uh, team is flying. Yeah, like I said, 360, 362 potential went to 359.85. Uh, Facebook again crashed. Let me see, I think that's about it, right? Uh, and there was a sneaky pivot. I said 354 could, if it could, if it could get back to 354, uh, it could wake up, but obviously it never did. So, you know, good session, good quality session. Um, I think going into this week, again, I, I, I want to be open-minded. Uh, again, this will be the, this will be again, the macro, uh, this will be the macro, um, kind of line in the sand. Okay. For the bulls. Um, but again, I think this week will definitely be more, more predicated based on earnings there's so many companies coming out uh you got net you got a uh, uh, tesla and beyond and amazon and and facebook and microsoft you know so you have a lot of stuff on the dock and i think that will definitely drive uh definitely drives the action so this is the area uh we want to watch for a macro close 221.60s uh, on the queues uh, let me give you guys some ideas uh that i do like um dollar tree looks like crap um you know dollar tree does look like crap um, it started breaking down. This is the clo lowest close in this whole move here. You know, watch for a continuation. If Dollar Tree can start uh, building below, you know, 87, 20, 87, you should get more uh, downside. Uh, VeriSign was a big, big flyer. But again, just like everything else, uh, you know, like everything else, uh, you know, again, you get an inverted hammer. That is, that is a sign for uh, softness to come. It traded right to the rising 10 day moving average. And the same case scenario that we're talking about for the Qs is the same case scenario we're talking about Verison. Again, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, well, here's a 10-day demand, and if it confirms, it goes all the way down to here. So keep an eye on uh, Verison. If it starts building below that 212 area, okay, if it builds below 212 area, it is a shot. It gets down to 209, 207, so keep an eye on that. Uh, ULTA, 
you know, actually does not look bad. Does, it, does not look bad at all. Uh, keep an eye on this thing. If it starts reclaiming, you know, this this supply here, if it starts reclaiming this 277 this week and confirms a 50-day moving average, you could get the next leg up. Again, this is assuming the market doesn't, you know, fall off a cliff. Again, knock on wood. Um, let me give you some other non-beta names. Um, I kind of like this KRNT, right? Kind of like this KRNT. Keep an eye on this thing tomorrow. If it starts confirming Friday's price action, you could test the high here, roughly 42. Uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, MCFT. Not sure what this what this thing is, but uh, keep an eye on this thing. If this thing starts building, you know, 18, 18, 15, you could start getting the next leg up. Uh, please, guys, again, for tomorrow, for all you guys who are trading with us tomorrow, please come uh, to Morning Strategy early. It starts up at 9 a.m. We'll obviously talk about Tesla and beyond and Amazon and Netflix and Roku. I'm definitely, definitely watching uh, Roku this week. So the most important thing, guys, stay safe, okay? Have an opinion, wait for confirmation, and let price action tell you which way the next move is going to come. Again, we're not in the guessing business, okay? We're not that smart. Again, me, the self-proclaimed king of the idiots, I, I know my limitations. I'm not that bright, trust me. So it's very, very important we let dictate price action what happens next. Guys, God bless everybody. Have an awesome, awesome uh, Sunday. And with God's help, I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care, guys. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today. Thank you.